your build a combo class today we are going to focus on core this workout is broken up into three different combinations in each of the combinations you gradually build a sequence of exercises and then you simplify it over a 90 second interval of work we're going to build up a combination and then we're going to reduce it so to give you an example just using arbitrary movements that we're not doing today first 15 seconds is just movement a Next 30 seconds would be movement A plus movement B. Next 30 seconds would be movement A plus movement B plus movement C. Final 15 seconds is just movement C. After the 90 seconds, you rest for 30 before repeating. Combination one today, we have some unilateral work, so you're gonna complete four sets of it, alternating right, left, right, left. Final two combos, no unilateral work, so you'll just complete three sets of it. In between each of the three combinations, you have about a minute to recover while I show you the upcoming movements. No equipment is needed today. It's all gonna be body weight exercises, and we will start class with a quick guided warm up, and we will finish with a quick guided cool down. If you love this class, I have another one available on Patreon this month. It's upper body and core, and we will incorporate some weights, but same structure otherwise. So if you like this one, definitely consider becoming a Patreon member at patreon.com slash Nicole Pierce. Now, before we get to our warm up, I just want to show you the movements in the first combination so that we can move fluidly right from the warm up into that first combo. This first combo is a crunch series. We are going to start out with a bicycle crunch. You go to the same side the whole time. We will then add on to it with a center crunch coming up to balance just behind those sits bones. Third movement, you are gonna roll to your other hip and you're gonna give me a side V up. So notice you bicycle crunch to one direction, you come through center, and then you roll to the other direction for the side V up. That way we isolate the same side of obliques the whole set. We'll go through that four times, alternating right, left, right, left. But before we do so, let's start with a quick warm up, focusing on breath, mobilizing, through the rib cage and mid back and a little bit of shoulder and hip mobility as well. So I want you to start seated with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor in front of you. But if this is really uncomfortable for your hips or you find yourself in a tucked position and you can't sit up tall, then you can do it with your legs crossed instead. We're going to start by just taking some deep breaths on an inhale through the nose. I want you to focus on expanding your rib cage east to west. You're gonna exhale out through the mouth like you're blowing on a birthday candle. Ribs move gently in and down. Again, big inhale, fill the rib cage. Don't shrug your shoulders. I don't want your breath trapped in your shoulders. Exhale out through the mouth. Last time, big inhale, expand through the rib cage. Exhale out through the mouth. And now we're gonna add some movement to it. So inhale to prepare. And on your next exhale, you're gonna nod the chin, hands slide down your shins, and I want you to roll forward over your legs and stay for a breath. So as you inhale here, you should feel expansion across your mid back. Exhale it out. As you inhale, you're going to stack the spine, rolling back up to neutral. Let's do that again. Exhale, nod the chin, roll forward, folding over those legs in this rounded position. Take a deep breath. Exhale it out. And on an inhale, you're going to roll it back up to neutral. We're going to do that one last time. Exhale, round forward. Big inhale. Exhale it out. And then we're going to stack the spine back up to neutral. And now I want you to reach your arms forward at chest height. And we're going to start to retract and protract the shoulder blades. So the spine is not changing shape. It is that free gliding motion of the scapula. Shoulder blades move in towards your spine and then wide across your rib cage. We're going to be doing some plank work later on. So we just want to mobilize and strengthen through that shoulder joint before we get there. Couple more like this. Last two. Last time. Come through neutral and then we're just going to roll down to our back. So you're gently rolling the pelvis away from the thighs, looking forward, vertebrae by vertebrae. Oop, I got to scoot forward. You're going to come all the way to lay down on the mat. And then I 
want you to roll onto your left side so that you're mirroring me. Now I'm going to cradle my head in my bottom hand, but you could also have the arm straight. And if that's more comfortable, you're going to take your top right arm, reach it forward parallel to the floor. On an inhale, we're going to twist open up to the sky. And on an exhale, really sink into that twist. Stay for an inhale. Exhale, get a little deeper. And then inhale it back up, exhale to close. Let's do that twice more. Inhale up to the ceiling. On an exhale, you twist it open. Stay for a breath. The twist is coming from your spine and your rib cage, not from your shoulder. So your hand should stay in your peripheral vision. Let's inhale it back up, exhale to close. Last time this side, inhale up. Exhale, twist it open. We're gonna stay for a breath, inhale. Exhale, maybe the twist gets a little deeper. Inhale up to the ceiling, exhale to close. And now we're just gonna flip around to the other side. I'm still gonna be facing you, but you can just flip. So knees bent, spine at neutral. Reach your left arm forward so that it starts parallel to the floor. Inhale, arm up to the ceiling. Exhale, rotate, twist it open. And we're gonna stay for a breath, inhale. Exhale, get a little deeper. Inhale it back up. Exhale to close. We're going to do that twice more. Inhale, arm up to the ceiling. Exhale, twist open. Stay for a breath. Inhale it up. Exhale to close. Last time. Inhale up to the ceiling. Exhale, twist it open. Inhale, exhale, maybe get a little deeper. Inhale it up and close. So I want you to roll onto your back now. One more thing, you're gonna bring your hands to your knees and we're just gonna trace some hip circles. Doesn't matter the direction, your knees are moving in opposition. Trace nice big circles here. You can release through the pelvis as well. It's okay if there's a little rocking here. And switch direction of the circles. Two more. And I want you to plant your feet down. Heels are under the knees, arms down by your side. Drive them into the mat for support. And we're going to come into some hip rolls. So inhale to prepare. And then on an exhale, I want you to start to roll your hip bones towards your bottom ribs, engaging through the obliques. And then peel the spine vertebrae by vertebrae off the mat into a long hip bridge position. Stay for an inhale. And then on an exhale, you're going to roll it down mid back lower back and then roll the pelvis through neutral. Just one more time. Inhale to prepare. On an exhale, start to roll the hips up, articulating through the spine. Stay at the top for an inhale. And exhale, roll that spine down, melting it into the mat and then roll through neutral. Okay, let's get right into that first combination. So that you're mirroring me, we're gonna start by targeting your left side obliques. So your right leg is going to stay straight at a hover and you're gonna start by bicycle crunching right elbow towards left knee. Now, if this is too much and you wanna modify, just have that right foot on the floor and do your bicycle crunch like that. 15 seconds to start it out and then we will add on. Hands behind your head for support. You're in an ab curl position. Legs extend out a hover bicycle crunch. Again, right elbow towards left knee. Now coming up, we will add in a center crunch coming up to balance just behind our sits bones. And I will bring my hands forward when I do it. So come through center. And now you come up bending the knees, hands towards the outside of your ankles, bring it back down one bicycle crunch. So that right leg that is staying straight, it does not have to be at a super low hover. I want you to be able to maintain neutral through your lower spine. Next up, you're gonna roll to your outer right hip for that side V up. So after you do that center crunch, roll to your outer right hip, legs stay straight, crunch it up. Bicycle crunch, 
sit up to center, side V up. All right, we're gonna finish with just that side V up. To modify, you can do it with bent knees. And you're on kind of the meaty side of your butt, not right on the hip bone. Oh, and rest. Okay, 30 seconds to rest. We're gonna do that same thing, other side. You can just flip around, but I'm gonna change direction so that I mirror you. So we'll start with just that bicycle crunch. This time it is your left leg that will stay straight and we will crunch in towards your right knee. So let's find that ab curl position, extending your legs up, twist. Right knee bends in. Let's add in that center crunch, bend the knees, come to sit up your balance just behind your sits bones. Ooh, what am I doing with my arms? <laughs> we'll add in that side V up. You're gonna roll to your left hip. Okay, add it in. After your center crunch, roll to your outer hip. Three part combo. Okay, we finish with just that side V up. Oh, and rest. 30 seconds to rest, we're halfway through. We'll go back to targeting left side obliques. All right, lay down on your back. Neutral spine or gentle imprint for support. Your right leg is gonna stay straight. The left knee crunches in. So you're twisting over to the left. Bicycle crunch. Add in that sit up. Bicycle crunch to the left, come to center. Keep your right foot on the floor if you need support. Okay, now we add in that side V up. So after you come to center, roll to your outer right hip. So you're on your outer right hip, the contraction is happening through the top left side obliques. Bicycle crunch, sit up, V up. Woo! Oh, I'm struggling. <laughs> okay, we're going to finish with just that V up. Again, to modify, knees can be bent, crunch them in, and then extend them long. <sighs> Smidge easier, rest. Whew, okay, one last time. <sighs> we'll be off of our backs for the rest of this. Combo two is plank face, and then the final one, we'll be in a prone position, laying down on our stomach to really get the posterior side. So you're almost done with the crunching. <sighs> okay. 
So you're going to crunch over to the right. Your left leg is going to stay in that hover. Let's go. Right knee crunches in. Modification, you have your left foot down on the mat. Add in that center crunch. Whoop! Don't come up too tall, okay? Or your feet are gonna come to the floor. You're thinking of coming to a rounded position. So at the top of this crunch, there's a little scoop through your lower spine. You're staying nice and tall through the upper spine though. Add in that side V up. You're going to roll to your outer left hip. Bicycle crunch. Sit up. Side V up. Last 15 seconds, just the side V up. Use your bottom arm for support. Exhale as you contract and lift up. Oh, and done. Okay, about 60 seconds to recover. I'm gonna show you our next combination of movements. This is your plank-based combo. So the first movement, you're gonna be in a forearm plank and it is a knee tap. You bend your knees, they tap the mat, you lift them up, trying to keep your pelvis stable as you do it. Second movement is a march. So you march up to straight arms, you lower back down to forearms. Third movement, when you're in the high plank, we add in a slow mountain climber. So you're bringing one knee to the same elbow, then the other side. We're just gonna go through this three times because we're not isolating one side any of the rounds. Now, 90 seconds at a time in a plank, that can be a lot. So at any point, if you need to modify, I want you to just hold the plank in stillness and you can always drop your knees down to the mat for that as well. If you drop your knees down though, whether you're on straight arms or forearms, just make sure you're squeezing your glutes so that your hips are lowered in line with the rest of your torso. If you hold your plank in a tabletop position, we're not getting the same challenge that I want. So again, just make sure nice diagonal line if those knees come down. Okay, we're gonna start down in a forearm plank position. In your forearm plank position, I want your forearms parallel. Don't do hands together, just because I really want you to make sure you're brought across the collarbones. I don't want you to internally rotate. So you squeeze the quads and glutes, and then maintaining this position with the hips, you just tap your knees and lift. Little tap and lift. Now, when we add up the march up next, just make sure that every time you do it, you're alternating your lead arm. So I'm gonna go right, left, right, left. One knee tap, then I'm gonna go left, right, left, right. Our next add-on will be that slow crunch at the top. So next time you're in your high plank, right knee to right elbow, left knee to left elbow, then lower it back to the start. When you do the crunch, I want the knee as close to making physical contact with the arm as possible. Now we're going to finish whoop, with just the crunch in your high plank position. Ground down through all 10 fingers. And rest. Maybe find a quick child's pose. Roll out those wrists if necessary. Ooh. So shoulders getting a lot of love in this one. We're gonna go through that twice more. Let's find that forearm plank position. Really press the mat away. Reach those legs back. We're gonna start with the little knee taps. 
I really shouldn't be doing this in socks. My feet are sliding everywhere. <laughs> Add in your march. Up to straight arms, back down to forearms, one knee tap when you get there. As little rocking of the hips as possible in the march, so take your time. Next up, we'll add in that crunch when you are in your high plank position. So when you're in your high plank position, one knee in towards the same elbow, other side. When you're in, in your high plank, try not to lock out through the elbows. seconds, just the crunch. Oh, and rest. Oh man, getting a little shaky at the end of that one. We're going to go through that just one more time. Again, at any point, if you need to modify, I want you to just hold the plank position with your knees down on the mat for as long as needed, and then get back into it when you're ready. Okay, we got this final 90 seconds to work in this combo anyway. Okay, let's do it. We got this forearm plank position, knee taps to start. Now, one thing I could kind of feel myself doing, I mean, I don't have a mirror, but it felt like in the last combo, I was piking my butt up to the ceiling. So let's make sure we don't do that. So glute engagement, squeezing your bum is gonna help prevent that. Add in your march. Thirty seconds in, you have a minute to go. That's not very comforting, sorry. <laughs> Adding your crunch at the top in the high plank position. Don't worry if the knee isn't actually touching the arm. I just want you to focus on pulling it in as far as you personally can. We have 30 seconds to go. A little more comforting. <laughs> Okay, final 15, just the crunch, you can do it. Oh, and done. Woo, shake it out. Okay, you have about a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our final combination of moves. It's down laying on the mat. So we're gonna lay down on the mat in a prone position. Your legs are gonna be externally rotated with feet about as wide as your mat. So just to show you from a different view, laying down, your legs are out turned like this. Our upper body, our elbows are going to be in a cactus position so that we're very active through the mid back and open across the chest. First movement in this position, you're just gonna lift and lower. Now don't think of getting up as high as you can, think of really getting long. Second movement, we will add in a reach forward of the arms and then you pull the elbows back into that starting cactus position. If you need to modify that one, then do it with your legs on the mat instead of doing it when they're hovering. Third movement, we will add in a heel squeeze. So you'll draw your heels together. Maybe they touch, maybe they don't, doesn't matter, but keep the legs externally rotated and then you will just float them back out wide. Okay, three times through, let's do this. After this, we cool down. So lay on your stomach, Le legs are about mat's distance apart, externally rotated, draw the elbows back, your nose is just hovering over the mat to start, brace through that abdominal wall. On an inhale, everything will lift up. Lift up to a long hover, down, nose hovers over the mat. Now at the top of this, my gaze is at the front edge of the mat, I'm not craning my neck. 
Now at the top, we're gonna add in that extension, your arms slide forward, you cactus them back, everything lowers down. Lift, extend, draw it back, lower. Make sure those legs are staying externally rotated, okay? Okay, now draw the elbows back and we add in the heel squeeze. In, out, everything lowers. Lift to a hover. First the arms reach and pull, then the legs squeeze in and out. Then you can lower. Arms, legs, lower. We're gonna finish with just that leg squeeze. Find your hover, heels in and out. To modify, have your upper body down on the mat instead of at a hover. And rest. Press back into an active child's pose, rounding your back up to the ceiling, just to get that counter position of the spine. We were just in a lot of extension. It feels good to come into some flexion on these 30 second break periods. Okay, I'm just gonna scoot my body down so I can actually extend my arms forward this time. <laughs> so we lay down, externally rotate from the hip joint, cactus those elbows. We just lift and lower to start. It's a long position, don't worry about height. Because I want the lift to really come from your mid back more so than the low back. All right, add in that arm extension. Keep the legs down if you need to modify. Now we add in that heel squeeze. Elbows draw back, heels in, legs out, then you lower. So we're just increasing the time. We stay in this lifted position. just the heel squeeze to finish. If you wanna do it with your arms overhead for more of a challenge, you absolutely can. Lift to the abdominal wall. Woo, and rest, 30 seconds, maybe press back. So we have just one final set to go. Now, if you're feeling a lot of pressure in your low back, I might suggest you don't lift both halves up at the same time, either keep the legs down or the upper body down. Legs about as wide as your mat, externally rotate from the hips, cactus position brought across the collarbones. Everything lifts. If you need to modify, keep your legs down. We're gonna add in that extension with the arms. We're gonna add in the heel squeeze, elbows draw back, heels in and out, and then you lower. If you feel a lot of pressure in your low back when you do that heel squeeze, and I want you to eliminate it, keep the legs wide and maybe keep them down on the mat, okay? I'm using my breath to help me maintain that connection to my abdominal wall, so I'm not just pressing my stomach down into the mat. 
Finish with just that heel squeeze. Oh, and done, awesome job. Let's press back to that active child's pose or that shell stretch. So you're in a flexed spine position, your abdominals are engaged, just so that we get the counter position of the spine after all of that extension. Stay here for a couple deep breaths, expanding into the mid back area. And then when you're ready, let's just collapse forward into a regular child's pose. So just relax it. Maybe head comes to the mat, knees can go wide if that's comfortable. I'm gonna bring you through a quick guided cool down. Awesome job with that. When you're ready, let's come to a tabletop position. From here, I want you to take your right elbow, lift it up to the ceiling, finding an open twist. And then on an exhale, you're gonna thread the needle. It goes under your left arm, bring the cheek to the mat and hold here. Now you can take that left arm and walk it forward overhead. Nice shoulder stretch here. This one always feels good, I think, after all of that plank work. When you're ready, let's walk that left hand in. One more open twist, so that right elbow comes up towards the ceiling. Come back to your tabletop, same thing, other side. So now your left elbow lifts up, open twist, and then we're gonna thread the needle, bending into that right elbow. Walk your right hand forward. And take a few deep breaths in this position. Right hand is gonna walk in. One more counter twist. So as you press up, bring that left elbow up to the ceiling. Uh, bring it back down and then let's come to a comfortable seated position. I'm just gonna to come to sit cross-legged. From here, I want you to take your right arm up overhead. You're gonna tense your left fingertips and then we're gonna side bend over and we're gonna find some more rotation. On an exhale, I want you to spiral down towards the mat. And then on an inhale, come through the side bend Maybe a little lift up towards the ceiling. Twice more, exhale, rotate down. Inhale, open. Last time. Come through your side bend, bend up and over to the other side. So right fingertips tent, left arm up. First find your side bend and then we're gonna rotate. Exhale, rotate down. Inhale up. Last time. Come through the side bend, come up to seated, and let's just take two final breaths together. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, release. One more time, inhale up. And exhale, release. Awesome work. Again, if you enjoyed this class, you can become a Patreon member to get access to more. I have another one very similar to this. We incorporate weights and it's a little more upper body and core focus. That is available now. Again, patreon.com slash Nicole Pierce for more info. I'll see you next week.